Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And Jesus is that light of life. This Bible study is going to be on L. Not the letter L, but E-L. Believe it or not, E-L has reference to the Lord, God in heaven, creator of heaven and earth. So when you see the word, a word with E-L in it, it has reference to God. So, hey, uh, Bob, you need to prove that. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad you asked. Um... Now, if you look at Matthew chapter 27, this is the chapter that records the crucifixion of Christ. And uh, let's see, I don't want to do the whole crucifixion thing, but uh, let's start in Matthew 27 and verse 35. And they crucified him. Christ, and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And I believe this is in Isaiah. I believe. And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. And there were the two, um, uh, then were there two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself, if thou be the Son of God, come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests, mocking him with the scribes and elders, said, He saved others, himself he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down, let him now come down, mm. let him now come down from the cross, and we will believe him. Oh, you're a bunch of liars. All the miracles Jesus did, and you still didn't believe. Even if he came down from the cross, you still wouldn't believe him. You'd probably want to crucify him again. So uh, that's Bob's commentary there. Verse 43, Matthew 27, 43. He trusted in God. Let him deliver him now, if, if he will have him. For he said, I am the son of God. The thieves also which were crucified with him cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And uh, here's the punchline. Number 46. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, listen carefully, Eli, Eli, Notice he said that word twice. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God. Eli, Eli, my God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? Okay. So, Eli means my God. Now you got to realize something. The King James translators were scholars. They were language experts from all over the UK. Well, England at the time. And they knew Greek, they knew Hebrew, they knew Latin, they knew English. They were scholars. But more than that, they were believers. Oxford and Cambridge 
were Bible-believing colleges, or universities, I should say, as was Harvard. Harvard was created as a Bible college. And their law school used the book of Leviticus. That was their law school. Well, Deuteronomy and a few other things. So, what happened? What happened? But Cambridge and Oxford, the scholars knew Hebrew and Greek. They, and they believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. To my knowledge, there was no unbelievers on the translation committee that King James uh, authorized. Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Verse 47, some of them that stood there when they heard that said, this man calleth for, this man calleth for Elias, which is the Greek rendering of Elijah. And I did a one hour and 40 minute study on Elijah. The Old Testament says that Elijah will come before the great and terrible day of the Lord. It'll be great for the church, but it's going to be terrible for the unbelieving world. Elijah is going to be one of the ones that comes to confront the false prophet and the beast prior to the arrival of Christ. He's going to be one of the two witnesses of Revelation. So if you're interested, I got a study on it. It goes into detail. But think about it. How do you spell Elijah? E-L-I-J-A-H. Basically, his name means my God, Yah. Hmm. Elijah. Elijah. Now, some people think Yah is Y-A-H. Others think it's J-A-H, uh, I don't know. The sounds to me are about the same. I'm not a language or Hebrew or Greek scholar. Didn't take that in Bible college. Sometimes I wish I did, but, you know, I trust the King James because those people did and they knew what they were talking about. You ever heard people say Yahweh? Some people say that's the name of the Lord. Other people say Yahovah, Yahweh. Uh, I've heard a number of different things. Uh, Yahshua, you've probably heard from the so-called Hebrew roots people. Uh, Joshua, it's, you know, Yahshua. Yeah, think about it. So anytime you see E-L in a name, it has reference to God. So let's take a look at some of those things. But really, the prophet Elijah means my God, Yah. Hallelujah. Really, think about it. Hallelujah. So what does hallelujah mean? It means praised, praise of God, praised God, or God be praised. As an expression of worship or rejoicing. So, yah. So, let's take a look at some things. Uh, how about the name Abel? A-B-E-L. You know, Cain and Abel. From what I understand, it means breath. Breath of God. 
So, yeah, how about that? There's another name, A-B-L, A-B-I-E-L. In the Hebrew, it means God is my father. And from what I understand, it's the name of the grandfather of Saul in the Old Testament. Do you remember the Abimelech? Abimelech was, uh, uh, he was not a very good guy. He slew, oh boy, I'm going to, I got to think about this. Oh, who did he kill? Uh, I'm getting, I'm getting Alzheimer's. Oh, okay. You can read about uh, Abimelech in Judges, the book of Judges, chapter 9. And uh, let's see, who did he kill? Oh, okay. Gideon. Okay, yeah, Abimelech uh, killed the children of Gideon. Remember, Gideon had, uh, under the Lord, had spared Israel from, I think it was the Midianites, uh, da, 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 let's see. And then Gideon had some children and um, Abimelech killed Gideon's children. So, you know, Gideon did a good deed for the people and then this guy comes along and repays him by killing his children. Of course, Gideon was dead, but, you know. All right, so let's see here. Gideon, uh, Abimelech means my father is king. So there were a, a few characters in the Bible called Abimelech. Now here's an interesting thing. In the Old Testament, Adam uh, doesn't have any nothing to do with El, but uh, this is the Hebrew word for man, and it means to be red. You take somebody with a uh, white skin and let them put out put them out in the sun, and they turn red, right? Referring to the ruddy or reddish color of human skin, uh, from being able to see the blood in the skin, right? And no, I'm not talking about native americans absolutely not so let's see okay adriel a d r i e l that means flock of god and this is the name of the guy that married king saul's daughter merab m e r a b Uh, let's see, Amiel, A-M-M-I-E-L, E-L, means God is my kinsman. This is the name of one of the spies sent out by Moses in the Old Testament, you know, to spy out the land. To, uh, when God said, you know, go into the land of Canaan, check it out. And, um. Uh, what was it, Joshua? I think it was Joshua and Caleb were the only ones that came back and said, man, this is a great land. It's full of milk and honey and fruit trees and all kinds of food. And, you know, we, we, can, we can take it. We can take this land because God is on our side. And everybody else said, oh, man, there's giants there. We can't, we can't do this. So... All right, for those of you that uh, watch The Little Mermaid, Ariel, A-R-I-E-L. It could also be spelled A-R-I-A-L, but uh, E-L. What does that mean? Hebrew, Lion of God. Lion of God. Wow. Uh, let's see. 
Yeah. Title character for the Little Mermaid by Disney. Ugh. No, thank you. I never saw it, but yeah, I know it's around. You know, if I didn't go over to people's houses that had TVs on, I'd probably never see any of this stuff because, you know, I don't turn a TV on. But then again, I'm working now and everybody at work loves to watch TV at work. No, thank you. All right. How about Beelzebub? Ooh, that's a good one, huh? Yeah. Beelzebub. B E E L B E E L Z E B E B uh B U B. Um Actually, it's kind of a Latin word, but it's from the Hebrew B A A L Baal, which is just a generic name for Lord. Uh Baal Zavav basically means Lord of Flies. Now remember in the in uh, the book of Exodus remember one of the plagues was the flies. Oh yeah. That was one of the Egyptians gods. Lord of the Flies, the name of a Philistine god according to the Old Testament. Uh, let's see, Beelzebub, possibly um, mocking of a uh, ball of the exalted house. Uh, Balzebub or Beelzebub. So, uh, some Christians believe that Beelzebub was a demon or a fallen angel, you know, a devil. Um, uh, in Paradise Lost by John Milton, the poem, he is Satan's chief lieutenant. So what does the Bible say about Beelzebub? Ah, let's take a look at that. Yeah. All right, let's go to Mark chapter 3. We're going to read about Beelzebub. Mark chapter 3, verse 7. But Jesus withdrew himself with his disciples to the sea, and a great multitude from Galilee followed him and from Judea, and from Jer Jerusalem, and from Idumea, which is Edom, he saw Edom, and from beyond Jordan, they came about Tyre and Sidon, a great multitude, when they had heard what great things he did, came unto him. And he spake to his disciples that a small ship should wait on him because of the multitude, lest they should throng him. For he had healed many, insomuch that they pressed upon him for to touch him as many as had plagues. And unclean spirits, unclean spirits, devils, demons, whatever you want to call them, when they saw him, fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. And he, Jesus, straightly charged them that they should not make him known. And he goeth up into a mountain, and calleth unto him whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve, that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sickness, and to cast out devils. Now remember, 12. 12 of them. They had power to heal sickness and to cast out devils. And Simon he surnamed Peter. And James the son of Zebedee. The John, and John the brother of James. He sur, surnamed them Boanerges. Which is sons of thunder. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, and Simon, the Canaanite. Now, was Simon a Canaanite by blood? No, I doubt it. You know, he just lived in the land of Canaan. That's why they call him a Canaanite. I mean, 
Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Do they call him a Bethlehemite? No. They called him of Jesus of Galilee because he lived in Galilee. You know, but it's like if you live in Texas, you're a Texan. You live in Florida, you're a Floridian. You live in California, you're a Californian. You're an idiot, too, maybe. But, uh, well, some of us uh, don't have much choice. But if you're New York, you're a New Yorker. Um, put a J in front of the and replace the N, and that's what it is. But, uh, yeah. But, uh, and no, I'm not insulting any of my people, listeners, California, but, you know, California, man. Uh, 1966, the Church of Satan was founded in Los Angeles. Yeah. So, you know, was Simon a Canaanite by blood? No. He just lived in the land of Canaan. You know, just like Jesus was called a Galilean. But he was born in Bethlehem. So, and Judas Iscariot, which also betrayed him, and they went into an house. You know, Ju Judas had the power to cast out devils and, and heal sickness. Oh, yeah. And the multitude cometh together again, so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard it, they went out to lay hold on him. For they said, he is beside himself. So they wanted to grab him to uh, take him to the chief priest to, uh, so they could put him to death. And then they're saying he's beside himself. Uh, basically, they're, they're saying he's, uh, this guy's beside himself. He's crazy. Don't listen to him. Verse 22. Here is the punchline. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Beelzebub. He hath Jesus. He hath Beelzebub. And by the prince of the devils, the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. So Beelzebub, the the uh, the scribes said that uh, Beelzebub is the name of the prince of the devils. And by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. So they're basically saying Jesus is casting out devils by the prince of the devils. And he, Jesus, called them unto him and said unto them in parables. Hey guys, gather around. I got a, something I want to tell you. How can Satan cast out Satan? Good question. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but hath an end. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. Listen to this carefully. 28. Verily I say unto you, all sins shall be forgiven unto the sons of men, and blasphemies wherewith soever they shall blaspheme. But, ah, oh, this is for the goats. Well, you know, goats like to, to butt heads, right? But, he that shall blaspheme against the Holy Ghost hath never forgiveness whoa let's read that again but he that shall blaspheme against the holy ghost hath never forgiveness but is in danger of eternal damnation because they said he hath an unclean spirit there's only one group of people on the face of this earth that teaches that Jesus had an unclean spirit, that he was possessed of a devil, of a demon, that he was demon-possessed. There's only one group. Yeah. And you wonder why they cannot hear the gospel. Well, part of it might be because they're not 
of his sheep, but another part is because they had attributed the works of the Holy Spirit, of Christ healing people, to the power of Satan, the devil. Wow. Boy, that's some, that's some heavy-duty stuff. All right, so. Uh, all right. Let's go to, remember what uh, when Daniel went to Babylon in the book of Daniel? What do they call him? Belshazzar. Babylonian. B-E-L-E-L-B-E-L-S-H-A-Z-Z-A-R. B-E-L uh, was a name of a satanic heathen god. Uh, boy, I guess I should look that up, huh? According to the Apocrypha in Bel, B-E-L and the dragon, uh, the Babylonians had a idol called Bell. I don't know. I don't put much stock in the Apocrypha. I'm just giving the, you this for the um, for reference. But it, Bel, Belshazzar means Bell protect the king. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second here. Oh, okay. In Daniel 5.12, uh, Daniel was named Belteshazzar. So there's a little bit of difference between Belshazzar and Belteshazzar. I was off by uh, one letter. Belshazzar was the last king of Babylon. He was the son of Nebuchadnezzar uh, before the Persians, modern-day Iran, conquered Babylon. Now, I don't know if you know your history or not, but uh, the, that was he was the one that saw the writing on the wall, and Daniel came in and interpreted it. And then the Persians came and destroyed Babylon. And Persia allowed the Hebrews, Judah, to return to Jerusalem to rebuild it. And that is recorded in the book of Ezra and the book of Nehemiah. So Belshazzar was the last king of the Babylonian Empire before the Persians conquered it. So, all right, let's take a look. All right, let's take a look at the uh, name Daniel, D-A-N-I-E-L. Uh, Daniel is, its meaning is, God is my judge. God is my judge. So we're, how, how do we get that? Oh, okay. Well, glad you asked that question. In Genesis chapter 49 and verse 16, Dan was one of the tribes of Israel, and it says, Dan shall judge his people as one of the tribes of Israel. So, Daniel means God is my judge, or my judge is God. You know, there's a pretty interesting, if you ask me. Uh, Eli, E-L-I. My God, right? Um, let's see. He was one of the high priests in Israel. And his children were not very good. And God killed his kids because they were, they were evil. Eli was the one who 
he's mentioned in the book of Samuel. And Samuel was uh, a good, uh, he was dedicated to the work of the Lord. You know, S-A-M-U-E-L, Samuel, Samuel. Hmm. Now, what does Samuel mean? It means God has heard. God has heard. Uh, Samuel, well, his mother had trouble conceiving and a, sh a child, and she promised the Lord that if she had a child, she would dedicate him to the Lord. So she did. So yeah, you can read about that in the book of Samuel. You know, if you've never read the entire Bible, you're doing yourself an extreme disservice. Really, you are. I mean, I don't know. You can uh, start in Genesis 1-1 and end up in Revelation 22. But, uh, you know, if you'd rather watch the a bunch of blacks uh, playing with a ball, uh, it's up to you. You know, I don't get off on basketball, baseball, football, soccer. Yeah, and no thanks. Besides, I know who runs the entertainment industry and... Uh, that's enough right there to, yeah, no thanks. All right, so, all right, well, we covered Elijah, so his, um, his junior prophet, Elisha, E-L-E-L-I-S-H-A, -E um, that name means my God is salvation so he was with uh, Elijah when Elijah was taken up into heaven so ah let's see and he uh, he was God's prophet after Elijah was taken up into heaven so now, here's an interesting word. Elon. You've heard of Elon Musk. Uh, don't get too excited about Elon Musk. You know, South Africa, the African National Congress, the ANC, Nelson Mandela and all that, you know, it's a communist group. All right. I mean, they get, they get uh, AK-47s. And all kinds of military hardware. They're Soviet, communist, Chinese bloc weapons. They don't make those things in Africa. They don't make AKs in Africa. So somebody is giving them these weapons that they're using to uh, get rid of the farmers. And if you don't know what's going on in South Africa, you can write me a, and I'll explain it to you. I've known what's been going on in South Africa since the early 90s. But, uh, and, and the same thing with the Somalian pirates. Where are they getting all these weapons from? They don't make them there. And they're extremely expensive. An AK is not cheap. An AK for me is uh, probably a week and a half's pay. You know, and somebody in Africa that's supposedly only makes two thousand dollars a year—that's half his—that's half his annual income. Think he's going to buy a rifle with instead of eating? I don't think so. But my point is, South Africa is communist. Elon family, Elon Musk family owned an emerald mine or mines in South Africa, and he was allowed to take his money out of the country which doesn't happen with communists. No, no, no. They don't let you take your money out of the country, period. It belongs to the state. But somehow Elon was able to take it out. So what does that tell you? Plus, uh, who owns the, um, the diamond exchanges and precious stones? And how do you even spell, you know, you take emeralds and you make jewelry out of it? How do you spell jewelry? The first three letters should be your first clue. 
Um, but Elon, from what I understand, uh, means El has reference to God, obviously, but the O N has reference to oak tree, oak tree. You know that tree, a hardwood. So God, God's oak tree. I don't know. But let me let you know a little secret here. Uh, witches consider the oak tree to be sacred. I wonder if there is a connection there. I don't know. Um, Elon was also one of the names of the judges of the Israelites in the book of Judges. So, yeah, everybody's all excited. Oh, Elon owns... Twitter now and we got free speech I don't think so I don't think so but what can I tell what can I tell you all right how about Emmanuel E-M-M-A-N-U-E-L or I-M-M-A-N-U-E-L Emmanuel it's from it means God with us. Let me take a look at that. Uh, we can find Emmanuel with an I in Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive. The miracle of the virgin birth. One of the few Bibles that has that is the King James. A lot of the modern Bibles say, just says, young woman. Uh, I've known a number of young women that were whores. They were definitely not virgins. So, some as young as 15 years old. Is 15 a young woman? Absolutely. She, she wasn't a virgin. I'll guarantee you that. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. The virgin birth with Mary is a very important doctrine. And if you don't understand why, I've got an entire Bible study on it. Uh, original sin and all that good. Well, it's not. I was going to say all that good stuff, but. Original sin is not good stuff. Absolutely not. So, how about Emmanuel with an E? Matthew 123, which is quoting Isaiah 7, 14. Behold, a virgin, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which being interpreted is God with us. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. So there you go. Emmanuel, God with us. Uh, now, this uh, doesn't have a reference to... Uh, L, but uh, Enoch. From what I understand, in the Hebrew, it means dedicated. Dedicated. When you read about Enoch, well, let's go read about Enoch. Now, there's two Enochs in the Bible. One was fathered by Cain, and the other was from the non-Satanic seed line, from... Uh, Adam and Seth and what have you. So, uh, the, the, the good line when you read about him in Genesis chapter 5 and verse 24 and Enoch, dedicated, walked with God and he was not for God took him. Uh, there's only two people in the Bible that have, were never died. A physical death. Enoch is one and Elijah is the other. 
which is why I'm kind of leaning towards Enoch being the other uh, second witness of the book of Revelation that confronts the beast and the false prophet. Other people say Moses because of the transfiguration when Jesus went to the mountain and was transfigured before the some of the apostles and Enoch and you uh, I'm sorry no I'm wrong it wasn't Enoch it was Moses and Elijah who were there and Elijah represented the prophets and Moses represented the law but the thing is Moses died Enoch didn't, and Elijah hasn't. So unless the Lord resurrects Moses, Moses would, she'll, should not be one of the two witnesses. Let's read that, I guess. All right, let's go to Matthew chapter 17, verse 1. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart. So it's just Jesus, Peter, James, and John. And was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun. And his raiment, his clothing, was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, the Greek rendering of Elijah, talking with him, talking with Jesus. Then, then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased, Hear ye him. In other words, Peter, listen up. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise, and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. Don't tell everybody about this until, you know, after the crucifixion, people. So, but Enoch, uh, I don't know. I think he's one of the two witnesses, but hey, what do I know? Um, some people want us to believe that Enoch wrote the book of Enoch. Uh, there's more than one book of Enoch. One of them's really satanic. Uh, it's the one translated by uh, Charles. R -A, I think his name is R.H. Charles. So that's the uh, one that Bible people usually, if they're going to talk about the book of Enoch, that's the one they're doing. So. Um, the word Eve, I know, it doesn't have anything to do with L, but from what I understand, it's Hebrew and it means to breathe or to live. And think about it. Um, what did God do with Adam? Uh, well, Eve could mean to live, but let's take a look at Adam. Who came from? Yeah, uh, who Eve came from? Genesis chapter two, verse seven. And the Lord God formed man, Adam, out of the dust of the ground, and breathed, breathed, into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. When you look at the breath, breathed, and uh, when you look at the word air, it has reference to spirit, believe it or not. It can't, well, it can have reference to spirit. Um, but in the New Testament, when you read wind and spirit, 
it's from the Greek word pneuma, where we get the word pneumatic, as in pneumatic tools, air tools. You know, if, if you're working in a, a watery environment and it's too dangerous to have extension cords laying all around, people have air tools. I'm sure you've been to a tire changing place and they use air impact drivers to remove the lug nuts on cars for the tires or to install them. So, uh, so let's see what else. Oh yeah. All right, let's take a look at the name Ezekiel. Ezekiel, E-Z-E-K-I-E-L. He is one of the major prophets along with Isaiah and Jeremiah. And uh, his name means God will strengthen. Hmm. Ezekiel is what a wild book. So, yeah. It's probably the wildest book there is. Have you ever heard of the Angel Gabriel, G-A-B-R-I-E-L. It's funny. Um, he is one of the archangels, from what I understand. Him and Michael. And we'll get to Michael in a minute. Gabriel means, God is my strong man. All right, let's take a look at uh, Luke chapter 1, verse 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin, to a virgin, not a young woman. She might have been a young woman, but not a mere young woman, a virgin, to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. Yeah, what kind of greeting is this? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, and behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach, Mashiach, Wuyah, whatever. No, no, no. My Greek Bible says, Thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. Jesus. And he shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. Wow. How about Matthew 121? And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people, not the whole world, and he shall save his people from their sins, and knew her not. Uh, speaking, uh, Joseph is being told this in a dream, and knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he, Joseph, called his name Jesus. So it was the angel Gabriel that told Mary to name him Jesus. So, yeah. So, let's keep going. How about the name Gamaliel? G-A-M-A-L-I-E-L. It supposedly means, my reward is God. And uh, if you remember, he was one of the teachers or rabbis of Paul in the New Testament, mentioned in the book of Acts. 
Paul said, I, I uh, sat at the feet of Gamaliel. And I've actually read some of Gamaliel's writings. So, um, okay. How about the name of Abraham's firstborn son? Ishmael. I-S-H-M-A-E-L. Ish has reference to man, or a type of man. So Ishmael, from what I understand, means God will hear. God will hear. So let's take a look at Ishmael from the Old Testament. Because there was, I, I have an entire Bible study on Ishmael, father of the Arab world. And uh, Sarah, wife of Abraham, said, cast this, cast this uh, son and this bondwoman out. Get rid of them. I don't want them in my house anymore. Because Ishmael was mocking um, Isaac, who was the son of Sarah. Boy, I'll tell you what, a lot of guys think having uh, more than one wife is a, uh, you know, some kind of fantasy. Boy, I'll tell you what, when you look in the Old Testament, it was a, it always led to a lot of trouble. I mean, let's face it, King David, one of his own sons wanted to kill him because he wanted to be king. You know, Oh, I'm not going to wait around for the, wait for dad to die. I'm going to kill him myself and be king. I mean, really. So, all right, let's take a look at uh, Genesis chapter 21, verse 4. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight, years, eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. However, Sarah's 90 here. Not too many 90-year-old women have children, huh? Verse nine, 6. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh, so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, Ishmael, which had been born unto Abraham, mocking. So here it is, Hagar, the Egyptian woman that Abraham had a son with, uh, Ishmael, he's mocking Sarah's son, Isaac. Verse 10, Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son. Kick him out. For the son of this bondwoman shall not be heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Well, yeah, it's my kid. You know, you want me to kick him out. But God settles the, the controversy in verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, because of thy bondwoman. In all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken listen to her, hearken unto her voice, for in, listen to this, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Not Ishmael. Isaac is going to be the promised seed. And I did an entire Bible playlist study on this. Hours and hours and hours. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And also of the son of the bondwoman will I make a nation... Because he is thy seed. Ishmael is the father of the Arab nations. Believe it or not. Verse 14. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and took bread and a bottle of water and gave it unto Hagar, putting it on her shoulder and the child, and sent her away. And she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water was spent in the bottle. Uh, she's in the desert and the water's gone. Wow, that's rough. And the water was spent in the bottle and she cast a child under one of the shrubs 
And she went and sat down over against him a good way off, as it were a bow shot, for he, she said, Let me not see the death of the child. And she sat over against him and lift up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad, and the angel of God called up to Hagar on, out of heaven and said unto her, What aileth thee, Hagar? You know, what's the matter, girl? Fear not, for God hath heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thine hand, for I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water, and she went and filled the bottle with water, and gave the lad drink. And God was with the lad, and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, and his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Uh, I'll tell you what. God doesn't say anything good about Egypt that I, I've ever seen in the Bible. Never. So, God hath heard. It says, Hagar, fear not, for God hath heard. Ishmael, God hath heard. The voice of the lad where he is. So, Ishmael, God hath heard. How about the name? Remember when Jacob had his name changed? God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. Israel. Now, I'm going to point this out. I'm not saying I believe this. But Ra, R-A. Now, how do you spell Israel? I-S, is. R A Ra, and then you got E L, God, right? Israel is Ra L. I S is R A Ra E L L. Ra R A is one of the uh, gods of Egypt. I believe he was a sun god. I'm pretty sure. You can look it up. So, is Ra, the God of Egypt, El, God? Is Ra, El? I wonder if that's why one of Satan's angels called himself Ra. I don't know. It would be very, very possible to deceive people. Now, know for certainty that if Ra was an angel of light in Egypt, the sun god, in 2 Corinthians 11, 14, Paul writes, and no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. So is Ra El, is Ra God? Uh, no. It's just Satan mimicking God's Anything God makes, Satan has to mimic and corrupt and pollute. So, but according to what I've read, it Israel means God contends or to fight. Um, or could mean prince with God or rules with God. So, now here's an interesting one. Javan. J-A-V-A-N, uh, means Greece in Hebrew. Um, this is supposed to be the name of a grandson of Noah and an ancestor of the Greeks. Well, how about Jeremiah? What does Jeremiah mean? God will exalt. And Jeremiah is one of the major prophets foretold of the destruction of Jerusalem by the Babylonians. So, yeah. 
Okay, how about Joel? J-O-E-L. Uh, it means, uh, let's see. From what I see, it's Yoel. So does that mean Yah is God? Possibly. So, now, here is a interesting one. We studied Gabriel. Now we're going to look at Michael. M-I-C-H-A-E-L. It's from the Hebrew. It means, who is like God? Now, this is kind of like a, I guess they were saying a rhetorical question, implying because there's no God, person or, or angel that is like God. Okay. And, uh, but definitely is identified as an archangel, protector of Israel. Now in Daniel chapter tw uh, 10, 10, uh, Daniel is having some visions and what have you. And uh, I think, yeah, I did a Bible study on this. So we're just going to take a quick look at this. Uh, let's see. You know what? Let's read, let's read Daniel chapter 10, verse 1. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar, and the thing was true. But the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had understanding of the vision. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine into my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all, till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first war month, I was at the side of the great river, which is uh, Hiddekel, H-I-D-D-E-K-E-L, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Uphaz. Now, this looks like an angel here. His body also was like the barrel, and his face like the appearance of lightning. Lightning, an angel of lightning, right? And his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet like in color to polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men that were with me saw not the vision, but a great quaking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. Therefore I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. And behold, an hand touched me, which set me upon my knees, and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, uh, fasting and repentance, sackcloth and ashes, people, and I'm a hypocrite. I need to do this more often, but I don't. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy Lord, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, a fallen angel, withstood me one and twenty days, but lo, Michael, one of the chief prince, princes, came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. And now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people 
in the latter days, in the last days, right? For yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground, and I became dumb. And behold, one like under the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake, and said unto them that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this my Lord talk with this my Lord? For as for me straightway there remained no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Remember breath and spirit? 18. Then there came again and touched me as, uh, and touched me one like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me, and said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong, and when thou hast spoken unto me, I will strengthen, and said, Let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. And he said, Knowest thou wherefore I am come unto thee? And now I will return to fight with the prince of Persia, and when I am gone forth, lo, the prince of Grecia shall come. Uh, we're not talking about a human prince here. We're talking about Satan's fallen angels. Prince of Persia, Prince of Grecia. But I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me in these things. But Michael, Michael, your prince. See, Michael is one of God's principal angels. What about Jude chapter 1 and verse 9? Yet Michael the archangel, ah, Michael's an archangel. When contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, durst not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuke thee. So even Michael the angel didn't bring a railing accusation against uh, Satan, but he just said, the Lord rebuke rebuke thee so in my, uh, Daniel 12 and verse 1 we could read the following And at that time shall Michael stand up, the great prince, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble. People, I think we're getting that close to that now. I really do. And there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since before. Uh, I'm sorry, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time thy people shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book. What book? The book of life. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that shall turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. See, we're not going to understand all this stuff until the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. I did a Bible study on knowledge being increased. Do you know that 200 years ago, horses were the main mode of transportation? Then we went to trains, cars, airplanes, jets. I mean, seriously, not the last 200 years, knowledge has definitely increased. But Michael is an archangel. So, yeah, let's take a look. Let's keep reading. An alternate meaning for Samuel, S-A-M-U-E-L, from what I understand, uh, name of God. Uh, Samuel could also be Shem, Shemel. Name of God. So, 
Uh, let's see, what else? Other interpretations have the root meaning to hear or to hear God. Or it could mean God has heard. And this is found in the book of Samuel in the Old Testament. Samuel was the last of the judges that ruled. He led the Israelites during a period when the uh, Philistines were in control of everything. But they were defeated uh, in a, one battle. And then he was the one that anointed uh, Saul to be the first king of Israel. So, and even after Saul was deposed, uh, he anointed Saul, uh, King David to be king. You know, David and Goliath. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, L and E-L-O-A-H means God, mighty, strong, or prominent. This could be found in Nehemiah chapter 9 and verse 17 and Psalms 139, 19. Uh, L appears to mean power and might. Uh, have you ever heard of the name Elohim? Yeah. So, integrity, uh, jealousy as in God is a jealous God, doesn't want us worshiping other gods. So, Elohim is a... Uh, means creator, mighty, and strong. It's a plural word. You know, the uh, you know who's uh, they might use Elohim, but they don't want to acknowledge that it's a plural noun, as in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, right? Uh, let's see. You ever heard of El Shaddai? means God Almighty or the Mighty One of Jacob. And this can be found in Genesis 49, 24, and Psalms 132 and verse 2 through 5. Let's take a look at that. All right, let's read that real quick. 24. Matthew, I'm sorry, Genesis 49, 24. But his bow abode in strength, a bow as in bow and arrow, and the arms of his hands were made strong by the hands of the mighty God of Jacob, El Shaddai, from thence is the shepherd, the stone of Israel. And who is the great shepherd? Christ, his sheep, the church. And who is the stone which the builders rejected, the stone of Israel? Paul says, and that rock was Christ. So... But uh, they take El Shaddai and uh, El, you know, Elohim and a few of the other words and they translate them, you know, the mighty God of Jacob. So when you see the word El in a name or word, it seems like mostly a name, but you will know that has reference to God. So, you know, keep that in mind. When you read the good book, uh, actually, it's not a good book. It's a great book. It's the only book. So, I hope you learned something today. Uh, seems like every time I do a study, I find something new. So, Oh, people, keep us in your prayers, please. Uh, things are things are getting things are getting ready to go bad. They really are. You know, I I see people say, "Oh, God bless America," and I'm like, "For what? For all the evil and wickedness that uh, we're doing? You must be. They must be talking about Satan blessing America because I see nothing but evil coming from America." And I can't even mention the words because uh, you know who uh, tube will uh, delete something if you say the wrong thing. So uh, 
I got a talking code. Really sad. Really sad. So, but um, yeah, hopefully I'll be making more Bible studies, and because uh, I'm planning on possibly getting a new job. And I'll be working different hours and probably have more time to do things. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. So I don't really want to quit my old job, but uh, they've been doing some things that are really, eh, I just don't like it. So, you know, got a decent boss, decent co workers. Uh, but what can you do? All right. Well, um, People, be prepared for what's coming. You know, they're they're planning an economic crash. They'll probably cut off the food. They'll probably do a lot of the these things. You know, these all the Bible curses are upon our nations. And they're not good. And if you want to know what these curses are, look around or you can write me and I'll send you a link. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.